Hey everybody, how you guys doing? It's lunchtime and you know what that means. Another great episode of Lunchtime Talk with Steve. So today we actually have Wendy Wallace with us and she is the host of um of the podcast on Mass 7, um, which is down and she's down in Dominica right now. Um and that's pretty cool because I've never been there and you know now I get to um to reach out to people and collaborate with people um on the island and that's great. Um but we're gonna get back in um maybe about two or three minutes and we're going to talk to her. Let me just run a couple of um, commercial spots and, you know, let you guys know what's going on. Take this time to share it with your friends, your relatives, your favorite groups and everybody so that they will know that Steve is on and we have Wendy in here with us. All right. All right. Let's make this happen. People be right back with you. So as I promised you, we have Wendy in here with us. Um, Wendy, um, how are you doing today? How's everything going? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. And you? I'm doing awesomely awesome. I tell you, man, you're like Liat. You leave the island at any time and you just travel from (laughs) island, I tell you. (laughs) But uh, so right now you're down in Dominica, right? Yes. All right. Is that where um, where you live or are you just visiting or, you know? Well, I'm originally from Dominica. I was born in Dominica. Um, I lived in Anguilla for a few months, just a bit over a year. Um, And then I moved on to Antigua, which is the birth country of my mom, where I attended the Antigua State College and lived there. I've been living in Antigua for just a bit over seven years now. Wow, I tell you, I, I, when when I grow up, I want to be like you. You just travel everywhere. You need to have a jet. I mean, I, I, I keep having these people on the show that travel all over the place. The other day it was Coach Cass. Now it's you. It's like, I mean, you know, you know what they say. If you want to be, uh, well, you got to surround yourself with the people that you want to be like. So that's why I'm surrounding myself with you guys. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about your podcast. Okay, so the On Mass 7 is all about, well, it involves a group of seven university students, and we are all Dominicans. We met at the University of the West Indies, Cable Campus in Barbados, um, while pursuing our LLB studies, which is the Bachelor's of Law. Um, mm-hmm. at, the time, at the time, I was unaware of any other, any other Dominican students studying law in Barbados, and uh, you know, since I was there as an Antiguan student. And then I met up with the others and I was, I was like, wow, <laughs> they are amazing. And since then we began this study group um, where we held different little study sessions amongst ourselves and it, went, it, it was pretty um, productive. And we just became close ever since. And we started a WhatsApp group and we, we just always indulge ourselves in such stimulating discussions, you know? So mm. we decided one of these days, um, guys, why don't we have a talk show? <laughs> we should. And the podcast birthed. 
<laughs> so, um, so what kind of topics do you guys normally talk about? So we generally discuss um, socioeconomic issues, political issues, and legal issues that plague the Caribbean region, um, specifically Dominica and by extension the Caribbean region, and any other issues um, on the global on the global stage that act that indirectly or directly affect our country and the Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. So today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that we were talking about here in um in South Florida. I saw it on um on one of the well I heard it on one of the radio stations. Oops. My hold on, my 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 lighting is um is a little bit off, but you know, these are the problems we have sometimes with live shows. Um but um but we were um I heard it on the radio and it's something that I wanted to um to talk to you about. I think I, I started talking to you about it um which was the um the vaccine of covid-19 so let me ask you if your job told you that you had to get this vaccine what would you do you had to get a vaccine of covid-19 to return to work whenever they come out with it they tell you that you have to get that to come out to work what would you what would you do would you would you go get the vaccine possibly <laughs> i most, i most likely would but it depends on it depends on a variety of things. I'm a student, I'm not employed. I was employed back in Antigua. Um, I worked at the Antigua Public Utilities Authority as a sales and marketing administrator um, just for just a bit over a year before I moved on to university. So I, I can still speak to, you know, the, em the on the employment stance. And um, when it comes to employment, there may be a bit of flexibility requiring vaccination because with the advancement of, of technology, mm -hmm. employees can actually work at home and still be effective. And I believe that employers would be a bit more cautious to prevent things like religious discrimination and you know lawsuits when it comes to a, a mandatory um, vaccination. But like I said, there are a variety of issues which I am really happy and passionate to discuss about with you later on. But personally, I, I probably would. Really? That's interesting. I mean, um, <laughs> okay, so what if your child needed to, what if they told you your child had to have it before he or she can go on to school? Would you, um, would you be quick to say, okay, yes? <laughs> Steve, I'm not blessed with any children as yet, but <laughs> but as a as a student, um, I possibly would. Um, you know, as a university student, there are certain requirements. Mm -hmm. Currently, currently, um, we have an option to pursue our to finish up our final year in our resident country, or actually return to Barbados to have sort of a blended approach, including face-to-face mm -hmm. -face and um, online modes to, to finish up. And mm -hmm. I, I am kind of struggling with the decision whether to return or stay, but most likely I'm betting on returning. And I know that there are certain protocols in place. Um, for instance, there is a 72 hour testing which should be done before you leave the country, and on, on, upon arrival in Barbados, um, there right. is another test that you you actually have to take upon arrival. Um, and if tested negative, then yeah. But, but but that's just a test, though. That's not a vaccine. Yes, but these these are also mandatory. Right, but these that's mandatory just mandatory now. <laughs> so predictably, they could possibly make the vaccine mandatory. I don't know. <laughs> that's that. I mean, I would. Wow. I mean, because I'm. That, that's one of the things that um that they were talking about on the radio here in South Florida, and um and you know there were mixed reviews on it as well. Some people said yes. Some people said no. The majority of them said no. Um, you know, but it's um. It's it's just uh, I, and I think it's also a little bit different in um in the um the trust of the government and the trust of the people that um that are telling you it's okay. Whereas um you find that um you know we, 
it, you know, here people are a little bit more distrustful of um, of the powers that be. So I think that's one of the issues. Uh, <laughs> the government tells you something's good for you here, and people question it a little bit, you know, kind of thing. But um, but yeah, so um, that's something that I would really like to hear the um, the outcome of that on your show. I would really love to hear you guys talk to um, to some of the people in Dominica about it and and see what they're saying. And I mean, and anyone else out there that has a talk show, whether you're in Barbados or Trinidad or Europe or wherever you're from, um, I would like to hear what other people are thinking. That's because it's, it's you know it's it, I guess it's different based on where people are where people are, you know, and even in the U.S., it's different based on where they are, because you might hear a difference in New York than you hear in um, in Texas, you know. But um, and even to some of my viewers, um, I, I want to hear what you guys are thinking. Go ahead and comment, you know, send a post if um, if you guys feel like you would do it or if you wouldn't do it. I'm curious. I see Antoinette is watching from Barbados. She says she's locked on. So um, so Antoinette, I'm, I'm curious, what is what is what is it that you're thinking in Barbados? Would you take that vaccine? Um, before having to return to work, or would you let your children um, take the vaccine um, to go back to school, or or what you know, what would what would you do? And I pose that question to my viewers as well, you know. But um, give me two minutes. I just want to run a quick commercial break. As a matter of fact, this is for um, some of the a, a group that we have coming up. Actually, no, I didn't load that one. All right, let me just go ahead and run this commercial break. I'll be right back with you guys. Yeah. Would you like to be more tech savvy, create your own compelling graphics, sales pages and marketing tools? Would you like to effectively use social media to generate more leads? If the answer is yes, register for one or all of the eight module digital marketing series. You will feel comfortable in a judge free, nurturing environment as we get the work done. My name is Melissa Jane, and I am your tech trainer. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-213. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954-549-8507 and tell them that Steve sent you. Baby, won't you take me there? I want some real good food to eat. I want shucking it down. Designers to get your taste palette back in line, baby. Follow us at We Shop. All right, so we are back, and today we're talking with Wendy Wallace, um, and she's the host of the podcast on Mass Seven. Um, you guys could check it out on just about wherever you um, you watch or listen to your favorite podcasts. All right, they have some interesting topics. They, I mean. From the first time I heard, um, I got a link and I listened to it. I was like, okay, I got to have her on my show. <laughs> I'm just saying, you guys got to listen because it gives you um, a whole different perspective on a lot of different things. Um, but today our question is, would you allow your child to take a COVID-19 vaccine um, 
in as a condition of going back to school or would you do it as a condition of going back to work or um so I'm, I'm curious what you guys are saying out there let me see oh, there you go you have one of um someone saying go wendy <laughs> your fan club so, can you hear me oh, there we go at um you were low. I can I couldn't hear you. Um, all right. So and so this is something I'd be curious to really see um, what people are thinking too, because I want to hear you know what what they're saying in different islands and different countries and different places. Um, and you know, actually, I think I have a I see a misspelling in there. Hold on a second. I got to correct that. See again, these are the things with the um when you're doing live, you know, you gotta you, you <laughs> there you go. I had vaccine with one C and two C instead of two C's. So I had to correct that real quick. Yes, but Steve, just for a point of correction, I am one of the panelists as well. So we alternate with the host. So everyone, we have seven there are seven panelists, so everyone has a chance to host and co-host and also be part of the panel. Ah, okay. All right. All right. So, um, so how do you guys come up with your topics? Um, do you just pick them from the newspaper or does someone come in in the morning and go, hmm, I had an idea? No, these, these are all topics that we have actually spoken about in the past. And we basically just bank on the relevant issues in the news, current, you know, current issues at the time to just, you know, just further discuss. And it's seven of us and we all have different opinions, um, diverse perspectives on various topics. So it's just a, it's just a chance to sort of lend a youth perspective of these issues. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 25. All right, all right, because um, you know, I mean, and, and what the reason why I'm asking is because a lot of the topics that you guys are um are talking about are very very relevant topics and very serious topics, and um and but then again, um, I find that um that in the islands, um, you know, the youth they're more um, what's the word I'm looking for? They 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 are more passionate about um political and about um you know a lot of these different things than here here you find a lot of the um the youth are more into the fashion and the things like that and um in the islands you find that they're they're very passionate about serious things and especially with our music calypso and you know soca and stuff like that we actually put a lot of um a lot of stuff into that a lot of um politics and a lot of um serious issues into our music. You know, because um, you know, I'm from Barbados, and we definitely do a lot of that on um, the the music, uh, the things in our soca music. So, how did the rest of um, how is it that you know, like, uh, there's a guy on the panel. There's one guy, right? Or, yes. So how does <laughs> the powerhouse of the team? That's Kevin. How does he deal with the six women on his panel? <laughs> Steve, you know, I hope you'll get the chance to ask him that. <laughs> I hope you'll get the chance to actually speak to all of the panelists. <laughs> but Kevin, Kevin is a powerhouse of the team. You know, he's he's the only male on the team. And yeah, he's 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 holding his ground. He's representing the males. <laughs> Yeah, next time I definitely want to um I want to get the whole team on there. It was kind of short notice, so that's why we weren't able to get the whole team. But yeah. next time I'd love to get the whole team on there, um and do like maybe a cross collaboration between um the two shows where you can actually record the um, record this and and put it onto your podcast, you know, stuff like that. Because I I really want to do a lot more in the islands. Um, I want to find out more about some of the issues that are that are going on in the individual islands and how um you know just how people can help or you know even like we did a few things in the bahamas we did some um shows from, you know talking to people in the bahamas about um devastation that's still going on after a hurricane a year ago or even two years ago and a lot of things that people didn't realize were still going on um there's one that i have that's going to be coming up in haiti and um we're going to talk about some of the things going on there from even from the earthquake what 12 years ago you know, um, because a lot of people think just because it's not on the, the front page of the newspaper or it's not on the it's not leading the news that that it disappeared. 
but they don't realize that these things are still around after 10, 15 years. Some of these things are still going on, you know? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about life in Dominica. I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of my um, my viewers are curious about life in Dominica, um, especially now with the the COVID nineteen, with the new normal, if you will. What um, how how are things changing? It is definitely a new normal, and um, Dominica is one of the Caribbean countries that that was able to deal with the COVID um, nineteen virus pretty well. Right now, we are COVID free. Um, we have uh, begun opening our borders to international visitors and also to um, to the, the citizens. And um, it's pretty back to normal, but we are still taking things safe, still wearing our masks, and just still being vigilant and aware that it's not it's not gone. It's mm. still there. Yes. All right. And again, I'm posing the question to my viewers um, out there, if any of them um, want to um, put a, a post in here. Um, <laughs> um, Princella um, Wallace, way to go. <laughs> That's one of the comments for you, like, um, I guess. Um, but um, I, I pose the question to my viewers out there um, about the COVID-19 vaccine. If any of you would take the vaccine as a condition of going back to work or if you would give your child that vaccine as a, um, a condition of going to school. I pose that question to all of my viewers out there. And even if you guys are watching on the replay, you can still post the comments because I will still be able to see it and I would reply to it. All right. So um, that's that comment. That question is going to be just scrolling on the bottom. So as people join in, they'll be able to see it. Um, so go ahead and tell me a little bit more about um, about school in Barbados, because I'm curious. I mean, I didn't I only went to in Barbados. I went to um, I was I left when I was in primary school um, and then I went to New York. So I'm wondering what it um, what you know, what is it like going to UE in Barbados and, you know, were you welcomed? You know, <laughs> did they say, ah, no, nah, nah, or did they welcome you with open arms kind of thing? What happened? Yes, I was I was definitely welcomed. I went to Barbados as an Antiguan student, um, knowing very few Dominicans at the time. And eventually I, I, I gained a lot of friends <laughs> with the Dominicans, uh, considering the podcast. But UE, UE is definitely um, dubbed as the Caribbean University. A lot of students are actually encouraged to attend the University of the West Indies. And um, Right now, there are three, there are two other campuses, um, one in Trinidad, one in um, Jamaica, and recently, yeah. most recently, one in Antigua as well. Yes, <laughs> one in Antigua as well. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure of the date, but it's pretty recent. Okay. Yes. So that is that is a great achievement for Antigua and also for UWE. Mm -hmm. But so but life in life as a student in Barbados is is pretty amazing. Um, one of the things that I appreciate a lot about studying in Barbados is the the association. So there are various islands associations in Barbados where you sort of feel like a community. So there is the Dominican Student Association, Antigua Student Association, which I was initially a part of in my first year. And you sort of feel like a family mm -hmm. in Barbados. So I, I think that's one of the highlights as a student in Barbados. And Tanette sent a comment. She's saying, um, I believe in taking natural herbs to build my immune system. If I had um, health challenges, then maybe. Um, if it's mandatory, I have no choice. But that's the thing, though. Is it really mandatory, Internet? Um, it's like, I mean, if they said you have to do this to go back to work, I mean, you have the option of leaving the job and going to another job. But are you willing to put your um, your health at risk on a vaccine, you know, um, or an Internet? Um, you, I, you didn't answer the second part of the question, which would be, um, would you allow your children to take it if you um, if as a condition of going to school? So, um, Antoinette, go ahead and answer the second part for me. And then we have. Yes, um, but, but Steve, there are already mandatory vaccines in place for students starting preschool. And also as a student, I was required to complete a medical certificate certificate form 
um, to be enrolled at UWE, where certain vaccines were mandatory. Right, so but this, this would just be another addition to the pie. But, the, but we're talking about vaccines that were around for years that were um, tested and, um, and you know, and, and tweaked and everything over the past, you know, 50 years or so. Um, now with this one, they're talking about something that they're trying to rush to get done before, um, before the end of the year. And then they're talking about probably um, having kids take it as early as next year. At that point, we don't know what the long term effects of this thing is. You know, because then it could be, oh, well, you know, you grow a third eye, but, um, you know, in 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know. That's a genuine concern. That is a genuine concern. But but apart from that, um, there are other restrictions that could be placed on on um, refusing to take the vaccine. Not only going to school and and going right. to work. You right. can be prevented from traveling. You right. can be exempt from social from certain social welfare benefits as well. Well, kind of, but you still have um, a lot of um, parents right now that don't do vaccination for their children. I mean, just a regular vaccination. They don't do things like um, like smallpox or measles or mumps or anything like that. You have a lot of parents that are exempt from that for religious reasons and for um, other reasons too. Um, Dan said, I would be skeptical in um, taking the vaccine. Sometimes the government lie about test trials. Also, um, these vaccines can cause other illnesses, which is true. And, um, and as a matter of fact, when you watch TV and you listen to the commercials, um, you know, they'll tell you about one thing that's for high blood pressure. And then they'll tell you the side effects are, um, you know, your hair falling out, going blind, um, impotence, um, death all these different things. And it's like, wait a second. So if these things happen, then I have to get something else to combat the side effect of that. And then it's a snowball effect. Before you know it, your bathroom is looking like the pharmacy, you know? <laughs> and, and, and it's so crazy because it's like the government, and, and again, I'm not one of those conspiracy theorists that just think that the government is always wrong, but I just think that for them to rush a vaccine it would make me feel better if I saw the members of Congress or, you know, the president and his team take that vaccine first. It would make me feel better if I saw them do it first, because if um, if they start going into the poor neighborhoods and start handing it out first, I think that would be the poor neighborhood would be the test subjects. If they yeah. start going into, um, if they start going into places like um, like the Congo um, and places like that, and they're doing it, that would be their test subjects. But when you, if um, if I see that um, Congress line up and say, okay, well, we're all going to take it and we're going to give it to our kids, I I would feel better if I see a congressman giving it to his son or his daughter. Yes, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Steve, governments are very persuasive when it comes to elections, so I'm sure that they can use these same persuasive techniques to ensure that um, that the vac everyone um, receives the vac vaccine. But like you said, it's definitely concerning because um, I, there, there are dozens of lab techs um, companies that are rushing to put out this vaccine on the market, you know? And I mean, you give everybody, everyone the benefit of the doubt, but you have to be cautious that these things are effective and safe, you know, not only short term, but also long term. And Dan is also saying, um, he said, but if it's mandatory, um, he think he would take it to protect his friends and family. So it's yeah, and I, I think that, that would be that would actually be my same same um, train of thought, train of thought as well. So it seems like a lot of people would take it. I mean, I'm hearing that from um, from um, from Dan. I'm hearing it from you. I'm seeing it from um, from Antoinette. I mean, hmm. Um, so I guess my question would be then: Is there anyone out there that would not take it, and um, and why? Um, you know, so both ways. I'm I'm curious. I want to hear both um, both points. I want to see if anyone is um, if anyone says they will, and if anyone says they won't. I'm I'm very curious about that. Yes, I, I am curious as well. And um, I mean, on both sides of the argument, there could be consequences uh, should a COVID vaccine become available. Um, they call themselves anti-vaxxers. There are a lot of anti-vaxxers um, activists out there, you know. 
and um, they could refuse to receive the vaccine. And to me, I believe that that could potentially jeopardize the recovery process. Notwithstanding, an individual can exercise their right to refuse the vaccine. But the government could possibly, like I said earlier, impose other limits on, on the other rights and freedoms. So for instance, I know we, we're talking about um, school and the workplace, but no travel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one would definitely be. I'm a Caribbean girl, Steve, so no travel. Restrictions on travel would be is definitely, <laughs> you know. And, and when you think about it, yeah, the travel could be um, could be an issue, especially if um, if it became something that Caricom um, wanted to, um, you know, to impose. And then, in order to go through any other Caricom um, countries, you'd have to have it, um, you know. But um, you, and that's another thing that you guys were talking about the other day too, and I didn't get a chance to finish listening to that one about um, about Caricom. Um, <laughs> let yeah, me hear. We were talking about Liat and the demise of. Um, of Liat. Mm -hmm. Right. So what do you think? Of, well, first off, um, if, if Liat um, disappeared completely, what other airline would you have to do the island happen? Well, right now, surprisingly, a lot of airlines have jumped out of the sea, <laughs> like whales, you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's Air Antilles, to my knowledge. There's also Inter-Caribbean, which I believe recently started um, flying from Barbados. I, I mean, obviously, I haven't tested any of them, so I'm hoping <laughs> that they're pretty safe. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with them, um, you know, and um, I'm trying to see if I can find... Okay, no, I didn't, didn't, it didn't come up yet, but we'll, um, yeah, we will see what happens with those airlines and see what happens in that space because, um, now with the pandemic, a lot of them that put money into the, um, into the different, um, the advertising and buying planes and getting the routes and all kind of stuff like that. A lot of them are losing money. So let's see what happens with that. Um, I got to run another commercial spot real quick and I will be right back with you. Um, all right. Give me two minutes. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll run it in just a moment. I'm still waiting for it to load. <laughs> These are the problems of live. You know, we have to do it. Um, so I see we have another comment here. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> she, she posted a lot. She said, it's a bit ticklish. If I was given the option where my child could continue um, to be homeschooled, I wouldn't allow it. If it's a normal school setting, um, we would have to go with the flow. Unity is strength, um, which is true. And if the majority says no, then it's no. But I mean, that that is partly true, but um, but everyone could say no and the government say yes, and it's still going to be yes. It's not going to be, a, um, you know, it, we would like to think that um, things are always democratic, but it's not always democratic because um, we can say no and then the government says yes, um, especially when it comes to pharmaceutical companies, because pharmaceutical companies, um, they donate hundreds of millions of dollars to political campaigns and they don't do it out of the goodness of their heart they do it because they want a favor when when the time comes they do it because they want to be able to say hey we need to make some money back you need to vote this way i mean it's as simple as that you know all right but um let me run the commercial and i'll be back in two minutes uh, sure. You heard of me? What have you heard? I heard you're the devil. I might be. Ah, come on, fool. Good, eh? Every gang in LA has to pay their taxes. What's up, Holmes? Where'd you go? If you stack short, go rob a bank. Rob your own mother. There's no excuses. Do not test that. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. You guys look like a couple of monsters. Who in the hell, man? Yeah, but I'm at peace with that. Uh, so la dosa de la madruga, mirándome en el espejo. What's up, Johnny Cash? How about that time you gave me like three different STDs? Are you kidding? Me? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. You got your wife, you got your kids, you got your castle. Daddy! I'm supposed to terrorize the herd. That's my function. 
God allows me to walk through the darkness and come back into the light. What did you see in me? I heard that you were this big bad gangster. You're taxing 43 different street gangs. That's thousands of dudes in the most violent subculture in Los Angeles. The count's short. Who are you? I'm the future, and you the past. You got your kids. You want to buy them back? You don't think he wants to spill blood? He wants to cut your heart off. Can't run for what's left. I got a 380 on each ankle, 38 on my right, 25 on my left, chopper in the trunk, locking my belt. I'm on it. Took my kids, man. I'm riding with you till the wheels fall off. You're bad. You ain't that bad, all right? Open your mouth. Okay. You splatter your brains out. I don't want that. I do. I want that. All right, and we're back with Wendy Wallace. Um, that movie is actually pretty good, um, The Tax Collector, and um, we're going to have um, Cheyenne on there with us. Um, she's going to be on on the 21st, so that's going to be a really good interview. We want to, you know, chat with her, see what, you know, I'll talk about the movie, talk about her career, all the different things. All right, but um, we're back with Wendy, and Wendy is co-host and one of the panelists. Actually, I'm correcting myself here. <laughs> of um of Unmask 7. So where did the name Unmask come from? Um how did you guys come up with that? Is it that you're unmasking the issues or is this you know <laughs> Well it's it's accurate. You accurate and it's good that you can you can just hear the name and just figure it out instantly. We are definitely unmasking the issues um topical issues and one of our slogans is actually topics in the tropics. We are tropical islands, and these are topics that are relevant, current issues um, in the tropics. And the youth, one of our panelists actually said, um, when we first started, it's normally, or it's usually known that the youth are the future, but she's saying that the youth, they are now. And that's true. So, yeah. Because I mean, we don't realize it, but uh, but it's normally the younger generation that's changing the world. By the time people get past a certain age, um, not that they want to give up, but they get so complacent that it's like, okay, well, you know, it, they feel like it's not going to change for them. But the younger generation is the one that always makes that um, that change. They always want to fight for something better, um, and 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 you know, and it's a great thing to see. It's it's awesome to see. I mean. I really think that it's a good thing, and I and I like the, the things you guys are doing, um, you know. So I really I applaud you guys for that, you know. And um and again, like I said, I want to be able to um to hear um a lot more points of view about this particular subject that we're talking about. So you know, I I really encourage you guys to do this one on your show, <laughs> you know. Yes, so I'll uh, definitely give it to them. Um, but Steve, just before just before we left, um, mm -hmm. one of the, yeah one of the um, one of the listeners um, brought up an issue, and let me just speak to some of the balancing arguments as it relates to the compulsory um, vaccination, because I mean so far we are all for taking the vaccine, you know, but in terms of looking at it from a legal standpoint. Um, with my knowledge as a third year law student, um, generally public health can trump individual health. Right. Individual rights, you know, and but but any restriction on on individual rights, any intrusion into a person into a person's autonomy, would require strict statutory legislation. And this legislation would have to be interpreted strictly and possibly consistently with the Bill of Rights. And I will share a recent example that I read when the, um, sometime during the COVID um, era <laughs> that we're in, uh, from the Supreme Court of New Zealand. Um, they actually addressed the fluoridation of 
water as a public health measure, whether it was a violation of the right to refuse medical treatment, and the court found that it was. But they decided that some public health measures could override the right to refuse medical treatment where these measures are clearly justified. And from a legal standpoint, clear justification would mean that there must be a, a reasonable objective to justify compulsory um, vaccination and to justify the limits placed on the right to refuse medical treatment. And, and such limits must be no more than are, are reasonably necessary to achieve the, the desired public health outcome. And they must also be proportionate to the importance of the mandatory vaccine. So that's just weighing, you know, on the legal standpoint, weighing on both sides of the argument to see where um, public health can trump our individual rights. Okay, see guys, that's that UE education right there. That's what I'm talking about, all right? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm talking about. That's like that argument right there was perfect. It was on point. I'm telling you. That sounds like you should be in front of the Supreme Court right now making that argument. That's that UE argument I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> Oh, let me see. We have Kevin. Um, Kevin saying, "Agreed, Wendy." Um, Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> An infringement of personal rights would have to be um, would have to be read uh, in conformity with the Bill of Rights provision in the Constitution. Good spot. Um, and but the thing is, we um, and I'm not sure if it's a little bit different in um, in um, you know in the islands as it is here. But you have a lot of parents that um, that choose not to. Vaccinate. Uh, vaccinate their kids you know um now i don't know if they're allowed to go to school or if they have to homeschool or whatever but they still walk around the mall and walk around um you know flying on the airplane and different things like that without um the vaccination of their um of their children so that goes back to the thing i mean at this point then what do we do if that person is vaccinating is not vaccinating their child but um you know, that child is still out there on the playground with your child. Exactly. And, and that's a good point. I, I would definitely like to hear from from some of our viewers as to why they would refuse to, um, you know, to receive the vaccine and especially for for their children. But Steve, you seem to be in line with that. With not, um, with not getting the vaccine? What? Would you refuse your your child from um, taking the vaccine? Well, I don't think that um that I would give my I would let my child do it right away. And the reason why is because I've seen well we've we've heard in history and we've seen in history where many times there were issues that um that vaccines were given to the poor people or to um or to lower standard or whatever you want to call it. I mean, every every generation, we have a cute name for poor people. You know, we have less fortunate, we have disenfranchised, we have this, we have that. But regardless of what we choose to call them, um, you know, back in the 60s, um, and um, we saw where they were given to um, the people in Tuskegee, Alabama, right here in the United States, um, they were given syphilis just to see how um, it was more a test. <laughs> People would um, would react to syphilis. Where there was a cure for syphilis, people died from it because the government um, just wanted to see what would happen. And it wasn't until some of these guys went to the military that they were actually given the cure for syphilis. Um, so we see these things. We see where they um, where they do it again in places like the Congo and different areas. As I said, if a person if a person wants to, to to prove to me that it's safe, I want to see them take it first. So if Fauci or Trump or any of them don't want to say this is safe, let me see Fauci take it and let me see his kids take it, his wife and his mom and all those people take it before they start handing it to um, handing it out and say, here you go. Because no different than the food that we're eating, where we're seeing all of these different um you know, the people are telling you, oh, the food is safe. It was grown in um in a lab, but it's safe. But you don't eat it though. So if you don't eat, how safe can it be? You know. Um, but, so. but Steve, maybe I'm overthinking it. But would that be enough? Would it be enough to see them do it? Yeah. 
Yeah, because if they trust it so much, I would like to see them do it. I mean, the, the only way to trust what a person is telling you is to see their actions. So if a person is saying, um, if a person is saying, let's say, um, the, the vaccine is good, but they don't want to take it. It's good for you, but it's not good for me. It's good for your family, but not good for my family. Good for your kids, but not good for my kids. I'm going to be a little bit skeptical if they don't want to take it or they don't want to give it to their kids or if they want to give it, they want to give it to their relatives, you know, because if it's so good, then you shouldn't have a problem giving it to your mom. You shouldn't have a problem giving it to your dad. But if you're going to tell me, no, I can't give it to them, but I can give it to you. Yeah, no. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But yet still, yes, still, they, they may be in a financial um, viable position to deal with the side effects. You may not. But if it's so good, you wouldn't have. But that's the thing. Again, if it's such a good thing, then you should um, you should be able to say, well, um, don't worry about the side effects. Don't worry about this. Because, again, it's like, let's look at, um, at McDonald's. You will see that a lot of people that in um that are, that own McDonald's franchises or people that are in a certain level don't eat that kind of junk because it's not real food, and we all know it's not real food. It's not like I'm telling anyone anything they don't already know. I mean, they'll they'll go out and they're going to get a steak that um that um that is from a grass fed cow or different things like that without the hormones, without the um the different things, which is the reason why food tastes better in the islands than it does um than it does here. Because there, you know that cow got killed from you know from Miss Smith farm down the street. Whereas here that um that cow got killed six months ago and it's been in a freezer and with preservatives and all kind of stuff. It tastes way different because it is different. Um, you know, um, so so my whole thing is if a person wants to prove to me that the vaccine is good, I would want them to take the vaccine first. I would want them to let their children take it. I would want them to let their relatives take it. But when I see that we see these things all the time and then you ask them, did you take it? And they're like, no, well, you know, I didn't need it. Like the flu shot. Yeah. <laughs> but then you ask your doctor, you ask the doctors, did you get it? No, oh, I really didn't need it. So why do I need it if you didn't need it? What, what, I mean, it's like you can, you can already say you're not going to get it, but I'm going to get it. So I need to get the shot. So it kind of makes me skeptical when I see the people that are making the decisions, not taking the things that they're making the decisions about. It makes me skeptical. I mean, but like I said, call me the conspiracy theorist, but that's just, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong in that. And especially since um, like it, it's been it's been rushed in such in such a short space of time. It's definitely mm -hmm. concerning. Like um like Trump. Trump was saying, Oh, I don't need to wear a mask because um, you know, and none of his people were wearing masks or anything like that. But then they're telling us we should, which we should. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I am definitely saying we should. Everyone out there should wear your mask. I'm not saying you shouldn't. You know, I mean actually I was a big proponent to shut down the country in the beginning so that we can just um eradicate this thing from the beginning, just like how we did in the islands, Barbados, Dominica, different islands um shut down Europe, different countries shut down, and um and they were able to um to flatten the um the curve long time ago. And then people always people were like, Oh, well, you know, those those countries are smaller than the US, so you can't really compare. Okay, well, Canada is the same size as the US. And Canada, the entire country, had less deaths than just New York City alone. Not New York State, but New York City. So if that entire country can have less death than one city in America, they must be doing something better than we are. So we need to take a, a page out of their book and see what they're doing. Um, um, Anthony was saying some people can get complications after such. If lost. Um, their lives taken um, such what next? Um, taking what um, I mean, I'm thinking means the vaccination, but um, but but yeah. So that's that's my stance on that. Um, on you know why I wouldn't take it, and I mean I'm not telling anyone not to because if that vaccine came about and um, and people wanted to take it, more power to you. I'm just saying what I would what I would really mean if my job's 
leave. You have to take this and go back to work. I think I'll find another job. And if they want to make it, if they want to make it, mandatory, I'd want to see the people at the top of the company, the president, the vice president, the directors. Let me see y'all in front of the line before me. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> but Steve, I mean, that, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable argument, you know. And at the end of the day, it, it, it is the government's duty to protect its citizens and, and public health should be at the forefront. I'm, um, international human rights treaties actually do not specifically relate to refusing medical treatment. Instead, they actually state that everyone has the right not to be subjected to medical experimentation without free consent. And maybe they should, they should look into um, reforming that a bit. And these rights are part of a broader, um, a broader right to be free from torture and cruel punishment and so on. But that specific reference actually to, to medical experimentation is actually a response to what happened under the Nazi regime during the Second World War. So, you know, um, there are conflicting rights and, and duties on both sides of, of, of this matter, but forcing an individual to be vaccinated is actually a violation of their fundamental right to personal autonomy. Uh, and this right is, is that every, every person should be able to make decisions for themselves and decide what they can and cannot do with their bodies. And, you know, you would have, <laughs> you have given quite an interesting and, and reasonable argument as to why you would refuse the vaccine, which which I, I kind of I kind of like in your argument, you know, <laughs> and I could possibly wait, but wait at the expense of what, though? Well, that's the thing, though, um, because um, let's first off, we have to actually see that this vaccination, this vaccine, is actually gonna um, is gonna stop the spread of COVID nineteen. Um, and if um, if it's if it's proven to stop it, then um, then that's one thing. But again, that goes that goes with the years of testing that normally comes with um, a shot or a vaccination or whatever. Because now they can tell you the side effects, they can tell you, um, you know, the the length of time it takes to stop. It. Um, and then, like let's say the flu shot, you get a flu shot every year because they say that then um, that it's a different strain every year. So if you take this seen today what um is there going to be another strain next year or whatever and um and there's so many different things that it could interact with i mean i i just don't know but um i feel like um one of the biggest things in this whole um this whole rushing for a vaccine is making the is making money i think that's where it's going to come down to it's going to come down to um the company that gets there first is going to make a trillion dollars um and and i think that they're gonna rush to the finish line without the proper test just to be able to make that trillion dollars that's the part that scares me because um you know not to say population control but um but the one that rushed there first and gets this money they're gonna look at the the couple hundred or a couple thousand or whatever that died from this vaccine they're gonna look at them as just um collateral damage um, again, let's look at the U.S. and look at other countries, you know, where we've already hit over 100,000 people, um, you know, that um, I believe it's over 100,000 dead, if I'm not mistaken, um, or, um, or, you know, but you look at the rest of the world, China that has a much bigger population than us, and why are we up to the same amount of numbers as China when China has a population that's tenfold or even more um, ours? It's like we, we should have a tenth of their um, of their numbers. And again, using Canada as an example that has pretty much the same size population as us. Why are we way past Canada? We are like a hundred times Canada right now, but we have about the same size population. So it so things aren't to me things are, the numbers aren't adding up. Um, you know, um, and I would hate to be I would hate to be right. And, and it takes 10 years for people to realize that the numbers aren't adding up. I would prefer for people to see the numbers now and say, well, question it, you know, question the numbers, question what's going on. But we're so quick to just nod our head and say yes, just because they say, oh, it's for your safety. Okay. 
we've done that. Um, you know, we've done that so many times in so many ways. As, as a matter of fact, last year there was a um, uh, what you call a Red Cross um, ship that was going down to Trinidad, I believe it was, um, and they were saying, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna give free." Care to everybody. Just come on the ship, and you can get free health care. A United States Health um, Red Cross um, thing. Yeah. Well, we still have about fifteen percent of the population in America that don't have health care. Why couldn't we get that ship to come and help um, with people? But we're telling people that we care about your country more than the people here, so we're giving you the free health care, and people are believing it. Sometimes when somebody tells you, um, when somebody shows you a bottle, it might be just snake oil instead of um, a potion. You know? I'm just saying, that's, a, that's just me. I mean, call me the conspiracy theorist. And I know I'm going to get a lot of emails and inbox messages about this, and I welcome them. Because every time I say something controversial, people um, people inbox me. But I welcome those things. You know, um, I welcome those, um, those inboxes, those inbox messages, because it gives me a different um, perspective and a different point of view. And sometimes people don't want to mention things on the show so they don't send a message in, but they'll, um, they'll message me afterwards or something. And I do welcome those. Send the messages in. I really want to hear what you guys are saying. Yeah. Oh, another thing, another thing too. Um, so the book, and I wanted to mention this real quick. There's a book that this lady, um, she inboxed me about her book. It's called Your Mind, Your Business, right? Um, and um, I got to look her up and get her on the show, too. She inboxed me about it, and this is an unsolicited um, thing. I'm not, this is not a commercial for her or anything like that, but I just wanted to mention this because um, it's a book and it says for, um, for the rising entrepreneur. So me, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I've always been a hustler trying to do one thing or another, whatever. And I'm like, what could this book tell me that I don't already know? So I went ahead and, um, and ordered a copy of the book just, you know, just to support. But then I opened the book and started going through it. And it's like a workbook. It gives you all these different things. Um, and I'm like, wow. So long story short, yes, it did teach me a couple of things. So I just wanted to make sure to mention it and let people know that if you're looking to start a business or something, grab this book. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. It's called um, Your Mind Business, The Rising Entrepreneur. Just look for that one right there. And, you know, and of course, I'm not getting paid from it or anything like that. I'm just telling you guys, if you're looking to start a business, you're looking um, for a workbook that's going to help you get where you need to get, this is the one right here. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think I paid like like 15 bucks, or something like that, but it's definitely worth it. I need to make mention of that. All right. <laughs> but um, so, Wendy, so go ahead and um, and um, I, I got to run back to work because you know how it is. It's just a lunchtime talk. So go ahead and give me a, um, a quick one minute wrap up on um, you know, about your show, about anything you want to leave with your, um, our viewers. Yes, so I would definitely encourage um, our viewers, especially the youth, since we are specifically specifically targeting the youth and just encourage them to, to speak out, stand out on issues that affect them, issues that affect their communities, their country, and their future generations to come. Um, just tune in. Um, our, our title is The Unmask 7. We're available on Facebook and Instagram where we post um usual updates. Um, our podcast is recorded and released every other Wednesday. So uh, next Wednesday is actually our fourth episode. So we're definitely on a, on a roll. We are seven law students and we are pa all passionate about these issues. So I'll definitely encourage the youth to definitely stop and check it out in your spare time and feel free to leave your comments and, and your feedback. We definitely appreciate those. All right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, and and definitely um check out the podcast. I mean, from from the time I got the link and I listened to the first um the first podcast. And normally I'm busy trying to do things with the show and everything, so I don't even get a chance to really listen to um to a lot of other things. But um, I I was hooked from the beginning. I was hooked from from like word one. All right. So you guys. Check out the podcast. I'm telling you, they have a lot of good conversation and you get um and as always it's gonna be a different perspective. You know how I am, I like to make sure that we have a different perspective on, on 
different things. So um, it was um, it was really good. Um, so guys, check out the podcast um, and make sure you send Wendy a message too and let her know what you're thinking. All right, don't just listen and go and then talk to your friends about it. Talk to her about it. Tell her what you're thinking about it. All right, Wendy, thanks. I appreciate you being on the show and we look forward to having you back again. Okay. Thanks for having me, Steve. Bye. Uh -huh. Okay, bye. All right, guys. So, so basically, what we're looking at here is, um, you know, the the difference in opinion. We, as you see, a lot of people were saying that they would like the idea of uh, not like, but they will welcome the idea of the vaccine. Um, I want to know what you guys are thinking. Again, like I said before, just drop your message in the link, even if it's on the replay. Drop it in there. I want to know what you're talking about. I want to know where you stand on this. All right. Um, the other thing that um that I wanted you guys to do is go out to my website, lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. Let me put that on the screen. There it is. Um, so so go out to the website and um you check out some of the services that are available. We have things like two one one to help you with your light and your rent. We have things like um um Feed in America to help you to find the food banks in your area. We have um the suicide prevention hotline to help you if you need someone to talk to. There's so many different services out there that you really need to take advantage of. All right. Um, as always, guys, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. If you see someone out there that needs something, help them out because tomorrow it might be you that need that help. All right. And you're going to want someone to help you out. Definitely people, um, you know, just you are your brother's keeper and we have to act as such. We can't just keep saying all the time. Oh, no, not me. That's not my that's not my problem. We can't keep saying that because it is your problem. All right. The next person is your brother and you need to help them out. All right, guys, as always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger, people. Peace. Would you like to be more tech savvy? Create your own compelling graphics, sales pages and marketing tools? Would you like to effectively use social media to generate more leads? If the answer is yes, register for one or all of the eight module digital marketing series, you will feel comfortable in a judge-free, nurturing environment as we get the work done. My name is Melissa Jane and I am your tech trainer. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-2820. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954-549-8507 and tell them that Steve sent you. Baby, won't you take me there? I want some real good food to eat. I want shucking it down. designers to get your taste palette back in line baby follow us at we shop please visit lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com if you would like to be a guest or advertise on the show
If you're interested in any of the products or services you saw on the show today, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website, lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. Thank you.